Got something exciting for you today. I got a box here. Sent to me from ICOM. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One Ray Novak sent this uh, over here. Who can guess what's in this thing? Well, let's waste no time. Let's just open her up. All right, let's see what Ray sent me to take a look at. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So they sent me everything, I think. The only thing I don't have is the 10 gigahertz parabolic, which um, I don't even know if that's available yet. But lots of power over ethernet cables. This is obviously for the remote sending unit or the RF sending unit. So you're gonna go from the 905, the body, the head unit into one of these cables and it's waterproof connectors on one end. In fact, it looks like this. Right there, goes in, seals shut. There's three links that came in this kit. I don't know what you'll get when you order the 905, but just know that those are an option. If you're like thinking about doing portable operations and you're gonna run off of like a tripod, you, you probably don't need the big runs. Ah, antennas. Okay, this has three antennas. These are the omnidirectionals that are available online. This is the AH-56 antenna with the little mounts here that you can put on a pole or some kind of top rail or a mast. You can turn them the other way so they're horizontal versus vertical. So, you know, however you want to align these. They're SMA on the bottom here for connection. And I believe we've got the 5.6. This is the 10 gigahertz. And this is the 2.4 gigahertz, this guy right there. So they look identical. They're just differences uh, based off of the label they have. I have some special Heliax that I'm having made for this radio to do the testing and, and playing around a little bit because if you remember, right, Microwave Stuff 101, and I'm not at all really educated in this space, other than I know, you gotta keep feed line loss down. And the best way to do that is to really put some good coax on there and make it as short a run as possible. I think the runs I'm getting are one point one and a half feet, which could be too long. I'm sure the microwave guys I'm going to meet up with are going to tell me exactly what I should be doing. There is a little handy infographic here for the CX-10G. That's the transverter for the 10 gigs space. So we'll keep on, hang on to that. Uh, something I did have to, I did open this because uh, we're going to do a demonstration and I had to test something out. But I found in this kit the tripod mount for the 10 gigahertz sending unit, the transverter and also the RF unit. So it comes with the bracket and these are kind of like slide in and down and, and then tighten up the set screws on the side for mounting to a tripod or a mast of some kind. They have a model for the 10 gig and a model for the RF uh, base unit, which will get you up to the 5.6. So that is in this kit. I believe those come with the units when you buy them. So if you buy, for instance, the 10 gigahertz transverter, this guy, which you can see here's the control cable, 10 gigahertz antenna, 2.4 megahertz antenna, uh, and two point, sorry, 2400 megahertz antenna, and 24 megahertz IF, and then you got your reference clock in. This is serial number 212. You can see the set screws on the side, so it mounts to that tripod, and it'll hold it up for you when you get running. I'll leave this in here because we're not going to take that out for right now. There's a couple of other odds and ends tools and some other stuff that's not really part of the kit, but they crammed it all, the, the primary stuff, into the Icon backpack. So let's pull that out right now. Set it up here. So it's, it's kind of a heavy unit, heavy piece of kit, and, and the... the primary weight is is this RF unit here in the middle. There's a microphone on top, same as the 705, same same type of microphone. And you have a connection point for that power over ethernet cable, the threaded connector for the weather resistance. And then there's a second cable and that goes to the 10 gigahertz unit off of the main unit. So we'll have that set up at a future date. Today, we're just gonna play with the stock configuration. Power cable, pretty much the same as what you get on the 705. Here's the RF unit. And the 905, here it is. 
All right, there's the 905 base unit. Let me focus you in a little bit here. So this is where all your controls are, very similar to the 705. Let's put the RF unit on a tripod and set this up a little bit, and then we'll do a quick demonstration because I want to make sure it actually transmits. When we were in uh, Hamcation, we never did a transmit test. We only did kind of a receive test and, and scan around a little bit. I just so happen to have a radio that works on 23 centimeters, which isn't the 2.4 or the 5.6 or the 10 gigahertz, but at least we're going to play around with some of the higher frequency stuff. More to come in that space, though. All right, the RF unit connects here via the Cat5 cable or Cat6, whatever this is, and it terminates into this weather-resistant connector which plugs in to the RF unit that I have mounted to a tripod, and then there is a screw-down collar right here. Okay. All right, so we have antenna connected. Let's take our microphone and connect that up too. Same mic connection as the 705. All right, so with our watt meter in the appropriate orientation, we can see that the power draw is 1.7 amps on receive when we turn the scope on. Not a big change. Let's hop up to one of the higher frequencies. We'll go to 1.2. And that makes it go up to 1.89. I don't have an antenna connected yet, but I did happen to make one. Keep in mind on the RF unit here, the transverter, you have 2 meters, 70 centimeter, and 23 centimeters on the type N connector, which things got a little out of hand here. I didn't re I realized I didn't have a 23 centimeter antenna, so I just made a little simple ground plane antenna getting about 1.5 to 1 SWR on it. Let's bendy the little legs down. <laughs> I just kind of walked this thing in, and it seems to be doing okay, at least for our testing purposes that we're going to do right now. And then you also have the connection for 2400, 5, 6, 5600 megahertz, and then that transverter for 10 gigahertz works off the 2400 megahertz that's right there. So now we should... With my little listening radio, I've got an Alinko DJ G7, one of the few 23 SEMS VHF, UHF handhelds that you can get. If I transmit into it, Kilo India 6 November, ooh buddy, Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu, test, 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 test. Good stuff. Let's go the other direction. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Test, 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 test. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Hey! <laughs> Pretty cool. Let's do that transmit again. Kilo India 6 November Alpha Zulu. Test, 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 test. 3.43 amps on transmit. So yeah, that gives about 3.4 amps on transmit. I did test this with a power meter. Unfortunately, I only have a power meter for 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So it topped out about 10 megahertz on 70 centimeters, and we know that when you're into the microwave frequencies, that is going to come down some, specifically in the 10 gigahertz space. Well, I'm very excited to get more into this. I think you know I don't do a lot of content on microwave, super high frequency, and all that stuff. So this kit, this radio, this whole setup is kind of made for someone like me, familiar with amateur radio, but doesn't really have a background in super high frequency. I personally am really interested in amateur television. So fast scan television, this radio should do analog fast scan right out of the box, assuming that we give it the appropriate camera. And obviously we've got somebody to listen to and the appropriate equipment to make a good signal uh, fly. Look forward to new videos that I'm going to be posting on this while I have it. There's a couple of ham clubs and a lot of interested microwave enthusiasts that I've already reached out to. So I will be touching base with some folks, hopefully going in person to do a little bit more testing and hopefully take it out and get it on the air at one of our local mountaintops with some of the other super high frequency enthusiasts out here. Big thank you again to ICOM for sending all of this over. I'm really excited to get myself more involved in super high frequency, and that's going to include getting out to the field, largely on top of mountains, to hopefully make some contacts with some interesting people. And I'm really excited to try out amateur television. That is a whole new world for me. So please hit subscribe if you have not already. Click that bell when you're notified 
so you're notified when I post another video or go live. And if you haven't, I'd like it if you gave me a thumbs up. Thanks so much for doing that. 73.